I'm back with the farmhouse table top build. If you've been following along today, I'm going to square up my top and get the breadboard ends attached. Um, I've already got my line laid out with my square just off the side to uh, cut my first end square. And then I'll just measure the length off of that to get the overall length of the table and cut the second end. Okay, I've got my straight edge with the square and then I set up a fence using my level that's measured over one and three sixteenths inches from the side because that's the distance from the edge of my saw blade to the edge of the fence on it. So I just measured that over one and three sixteenths, clamped down my square to give me a straight edge to cut this square. <laughs> and make sure you measure your make sure your blade is extended far enough. This table is almost two inches and I don't normally cut two inch wood. Now that I have all these lines marked, I will take my breadboards off so I can drill my beadlock groups. This is the beadlock system that I have. It will drill two holes. You slide it over and drill the third hole. And then these little dowels fit right into it. And that's what will connect. Half will be in the table and half will be in the breadboard. And that's what will connect them together. And then I will drill a hole in the one end that's in the breadboard and run a dowel through it. And that will draw it up into the table to keep it nice and tight. Little D here it has a little line in there. You line that up with the lines you saw me make on my boards. Um, this one I have some shims put in. You can see here um, just to make it a little further down in my wood the line I made in my wood right there with this edge right there. Line that up. I'm going to clamp it down and then you drill through these holes here. Drill two drills and loose, loosen that up, slide it over and you do one hole and it gives you that like that when it's done. And then your beads that just slides right in there like that. Okay, I got all of my beadlocks drilled into my tabletop. Both ends have five in each. You can kind of see here. So the next step is doing the same thing in the breadboard end. Remember, I did each mark. The only difference is in the breadboard end, the middle one is going to be tight. Because remember when I said 
said when we glue up, our board's going to expand and contract. So it's going to be the same thing here. This one's going to be drilled right like it's supposed to be. The ones on each end, I'm going to drill, but then I'm going to kind of move it over a little bit and kind of uh, wall it out a little bit. So there's a little movement when these boards expand and contract, they'll have room to move on the breadboard end, and that will keep our tabletop from cracking. So I've got all of my beadlock dowels holes drilled into my apron, I mean my tabletop, which are all nice and tight, and then into my breadboards, which are, like I said, the middle one is snug. These other ones I've kind of wallered out to where they're loose. So my next step is going to be gluing the little beadlock dowels into these and they'll fit a little snugger they'll get glued in and i'll let them dry and then i will come back and i will drill a hole in the center of them to run a dowel drill a hole through here too and i'll run a dowel from the breadboard down through this and that's what's going to hold our breadboard in place Okay, I've got my dowels in, glued in, let them dry. My final step before actually attaching my breadboards is to drill a hole. I've got a um, 3 8 inch dowel that will go through the breadboard, through the dowels to attach them to the tabletop. So I'm going to drill a hole, a little smaller than 3 8 I grabbed an 11 32nd. To drill my hole. I've made a mark using my Craig um, multi mark. Half an inch out on my um, dowels here. Made a mark and then I just use a little awl to make a little point in there to make my drill hopefully stay on center. I don't have any brad tip drills. So I did that for these two, skipping the middle one and doing the two on the end. The middle one, we want it tight. Everything on the middle one's tight. The dowels are tight in the board and in the breadboard. 
and the um, dowel going through is also going to be tight and it's all going to be glued because we want that one to be solid and to hold it in place and we want the outside ones to have the movement as your Brit as your boards um, expand and contract this tabletop when I glued it up was a full 36 inches it's already shrunk up 3 16 just from being inside um, so that way as it gets the summer humidity comes in it expands a little bit those outside boards have room to expand out without cracking our tabletop so I'm gonna get all these drilled we'll get the middle one um, glued on get my breadboards clamped on and then that one I will come back and drill through the breadboard and through the dowel all at one time and the outside ones as I drill them I'll drill my hole and then I'll go back and I'll kind of just like I made the holes in the breadboard a little wider I'm also going to make that hole in the dowel a little wider so that it's got a little room to move everything moved back in the house because I'm going to clamp it up let it sit overnight all I'm doing at this point these middle dowels that are um, do not have holes in them yet they're the ones that are glued tight I'm gonna put a little glue on the dowel put my breadboard ends on clamp it up from each end just let that sit overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and we'll do the drill the holes down through the breadboard into the dowels and um, put our dowels in and then let that sit up and glue and then it'll be ready to router the edges and sand and stain.
will come back and drill holes in each of these and put the dowels in and that will hold it up nice and tight for us once we get the clamps off. inside with our tabletop to drill the holes, put the dowels, and then these breadboards will be attached and I'll be done with this part. So I'm making marks. Remember when I, on the little breadboard, those beadlock things, I guess they're dowels. Um, on those, I measured back about half, half an inch, drilled my hole. So this, to do the draw bore, this hole has to be back about a sixteenth inch. So I'm going to come back um, 9 sixteenths, make a mark, make a little hole with my awl, and drill my hole down. And then we come back, put a little glue on the end of this, drive it down into the breadboard, and cut it flush. I'm going to go bend back over and used um, the 11 30 seconds on this side. I noticed I did a couple of those previous and maybe I didn't do that up far enough, but I was having trouble driving it all the way through. Japanese flush cut saw. back and sand that up.
Okay, I'm taking it out of the clamps. Got it all loosened up. I've got to say this is probably one of the tightest <laughs> breadboards I've ever done. Looks good. I'm telling you, I'm not a professional at this at all. I'm constantly learning, trying to improve. Let me see how snug and tight that is. I, um, all I gotta do now is round over the edges here and sand it down, get it ready for um, the stain. That's it, if you have any questions, just let me know. I, um, like I said, I'm not a professional by any means. I've watched uh, plenty of YouTube videos trying to learn how to do this. Um, this is my probably third or fourth table with breadboards. Uh, I think I get a little better each time. They're a little tighter, looking a little better. Um, process goes a little smoother. But um, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If you got any questions, let me know.